they say that the building blocks of all the matter all the fundamental particles are these strings right so first question is are these strings of energy or are they strings of substance okay now to people who say that you know it's strings of energy and then this is huge Higgs bosons and there is this you know Higgs field which fills up the empty space from which everything pops up and everything is a manifestation of energy but like I said energy cannot exist on its own energy is simply that which displaces a substance so without substance there cannot be energy um, I don't know if people need to go to you know philosophy uh, you know classes to figure out uh, the logic behind this or whatever but for energy to exist substance has to exist because energy by definition is something that makes the substance move right so without substance there cannot be energy right and so this uh, whole thing about uh, substance being made out of energy is an argument which I don't I don't think is logic right um, I hope you understand that right the simple point I'm trying to make is it can't be just strings of energy because there has to be some sort of a medium a substance medium uh, which the energy is making up okay so now uh, so they say the strings of substance they say it's a string it's the the most basic matter so people who say strings are the most basic matter you are assuming a lot more with the string rather than ether theory right so let me say how so you say strings are there they, are, they can be infinitely long or small or they say you can you say it's open-ended or close-ended or you can say you know just like a I don't know like a dough or something it can just stick together and come apart uh, or all these things right so how do you assume all this how do you think so if 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 a material can just stick together and come apart what exactly are the properties of that particular medium you know how is this sticking together happening how is this coming apart happening and so that's number one right what exactly are the components of the string this is happening you know making the sticking and coming off thing and then uh, the other thing is what is making the string what is determining the length of the string and all that so the properties of the string that's number one number two is uh, so what is the velocity of a particle let's say a photon or a things even more fundamental than that uh, so uh, you say uh, I kind of forgot, but I don't know. The quarks make up photons, or something, right? Um, so let's say uh, let's just talk about photon, right? I'm not a physics student. I only studied in high school, right? Anyway, uh, so let's say a photon is, uh, which is ultimately made out of a string, is moving at the speed of uh, the ten power, to, uh, ten to the power of eight, whatever, right? So when you say the speed of photon is that, are you saying the string moves at that particular speed in space or are you saying that the wave, you say the strings vibrate, right? You're saying, are you saying that the vibration within the string is going at the speed of 10 to the power of uh, 8? What is it? Are the, are the strings physically moving or the waves within the string moving itself so uh, if the f if you say the string is what is moving so why would the wave be associated with that because uh, the the wavelength is actually related to the velocity of the particular particle right so uh, I don't know de Broglie wave equation or something like that so what is the relation there so i can i can have a very slow wave i mean a very lower frequency wave happening within the string but the string can still fa travel fast in space right what is the relationship there and if you say um 
both it's not the way the physical string itself traveling but it's only the wave within the string which is traveling it doesn't make sense if if only the wave accounts as the velocity the wave cannot get out of the string right let's say the string is standing in one particular position in space the wave is there in the string so if you say this wave is what constitutes the photon the the frequency and the vibration of the wave so <coughs> it cannot go out of the string right so the photon can't really travel that much right <coughs> so yeah so what is what is the thing if the string travels in space what is the relation between the wavelength you say of the frequency of the photon right what is the relation between that because you say uh, the the wave of the vibration the wave uh, vibration within the string is what uh constitutes the frequency of photons and all that right so what is that relationship so <clears throat> so that's number 2 and then uh, so uh, how what exactly is the what what exactly happens if these two things collide and where do these come from are there any difference in densities of the spring uh <clears throat> so what happens if, okay uh, what happens if there are no strings in a particular region in space the light cannot travel is is that what it is it i mean uh is there's no i mean how is one particle exerting a force on other particle if one particle is a string standing here the other particle is a string that's just vibrating over there how is the force exerted from this spring into that spring how is that happening you know if there's no other connection between these two springs strings sorry um uh so what what so so that's the number number third question right um i mean if i know that i'm stuttering a lot but if you can just read on the video sir <coughs> try to understand the question again i guess you know you can get it right <coughs> so, so how what's the explanation to all this you know um see i would still i mean i still sub- support the ether theory which is advocated by tesla as well right so for me i'm just saying see there has to be a like i said there has to be a substance on which energy and vibrations can occur so that substance has to be uh, ether <coughs> right so or whatever you say i mean the fifth dimension and the eleventh dimension all that shit and that's again it's it's not i've seen how they define it they say that if you look at an ant that's just traveling across a wire in a long distance it's actually going in the fifth dimension so if i see a guy who's uh walking uh, getting up a spiral staircase at distance is he traveling in the fifth dimension i don't think so he's still traveling in three dimension for me it's just that um it's just very curled up a very little bit but he's basically it's still just moving in three dimension i don't think anything exists in one dimension or two dimension i think everything that exists exists in three dimension like you take uh, this from the photon to uh, um well let's just not i mean i know that energy waves can vibrate in so many different dimensions but if you think about a tangible substance any tangible substance it can exist only in three dimensional space there's only three dimensions to space <clears throat> no less no more right so that's my thing uh, i mean you can define for the sake of calculations things like that but <clears throat> the in in reality in existential reality i think this is three dimensions to space and if at all any tangible substance exists it always exists in three dimension right it cannot exist in 11 dimensions or it can't exist in two dimension right and uh, yeah all this time being in another dimension is just for the sake of calculation and all right so that's that um <clears throat> so now coming back to the ether theory right so you know what tesla said that you know is is that the properties of ether need to be defined and research, researched and defined better that's what he said so uh people why did they reject the ether theory right they said that you know for light to be traveling as so uh, fast it has to be infinitely dense infinitely dense at the same time for humans to travel through it 
it can't be that dense so it has to be zero whiskers is what they say you know they say it has to be zero whiskers but infinitely dense right but this theory is wrong so now this is like saying i mean they are imagining humans let's say you're throwing a stone in water right they think that humans are stone and ether is the medium water but it's not that scenario or, or let's just say uh, the, the the analogy is fish in water right so it's not i mean humans right humans are not like fish in the water of ether humans are like ripples in water because everything every single thing that makes us up the electrons and the photons and all these things right <clears throat> they are all just vibrations within the medium itself so so water doesn't have to be zero viscous for waves to move through it it has to be zero viscous for fish to move through it i mean you know with that ease but it doesn't have to be viscous at all for humans or the waves in it to move to right um so and this is what it is uh, this is what i subscribe to i guess so with this easy theory right every single particle every single boson or every single quarks or fermions or whatever i agree they are vibrations they are waves which can be defined mathematically using uh you know <clears throat> which can be thought of as vibrating in different ways in a very complex orient it's not just single harmonic but multi harmonic wave of complex orientation they are all that i mean a photon is not a simple sign it could be a double toroidal vertex or something of a really complex orientation which has so many different components it's not doesn't have just one component even a simple photon can have many different components right but in the end these are all just waves in the medium of ether and so any equation that you come up with in you know or uh, you put together in string theory to define the vibrations within a string can be used to define <clears throat> this vibration that's happening in the medium of ether right so now we can't just leave it there we need to sort of define the properties of ether as well right so uh i've say i've seen some other blogs as well about this and i also kind of have this view that you know ether again in turn is made up of uh sub ethereal particles and uh, <clears throat> so those might be the most fundamental basic blocks right uh so it's like it's like uh, it's like an air it's like a hurricane right it's got sub ethereal particles focused in this region of space with a particular density there is no forces of attraction between individual particles but they are all just there together right there's no just like there is an intermolecular force of attraction between the uh, molecules of a solid or a liquid or even a small extent in, in gases um there is no intermol inter subterial particle force of attraction between those sub particles they just there right but they happen to be there at a particular density <clears throat> and if one goes and touches the other it's going to try to replace if one if if there is energy at one particular point or rather at for energy within one subterial particle it is going to move and it is going to uh, try to displace the next particle right and so that particle is going to resist or so exert another thing back so this is how uh waves and vibrations occur within the medium of ether ether medium has sub ethereal particles but uh, and uh, but there is energy present here so they have set temporarily come together just like how a cyclone or hurricane has come together temporarily or a whirlpool has come together it's it's one big whirlpool it's just it's here at the moment but eventually it's going to lose density and go away so the this ether whirlpool 
will eventually lose its density and the subethereal particles will go away but for the moment they are they are together <coughs> right and so right now as they are together they have the density uh, required enough uh, <coughs> for waves to be uh, uh, present there so even without intermolecular forces of attraction in the subethereal particle force of attraction waves can exist right uh, whether it's a toroidal wave or a, a simple sine wave or whatever it can exist uh, amongst the uh, medium of ether so yeah this is my uh, the, uh, question on string theory and <coughs> the ether theory so uh, guys can I don't know if anyone can answer <coughs> those three questions or you, you think all these whatever I've said is kind of doesn't make sense you can Share it in the comment section. Yeah.